This presentation is on variables. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to state what a variable is. You should be able to describe what independent, dependent, and control variables are. And you should be able to explain why such variables are required in a scientific investigation. So what actually is a variable? Well, the dictionary defines being variable as something that is liable to vary or change. An example would be my mood. When you hand in your homework on time, I'm very happy. When you haven't done it, I get very cross and a little bit sad. My mood, therefore, is variable. In scientific investigations, a variable is anything in your experiment that can change and thus can affect your results. So why do we need to think about variables? Now imagine you went to a football match and wanted to investigate whether your team would win because they had a brand new signing. This investigation could not be done scientifically because there are so many other factors that could have affected the results of the match. The other team might have had an off day and not played well. There could have been unusual mistakes made by a goalkeeper or a defender leading to a goal. Whether the players had enough sleep the night before would have affected the match. Or your team playing at home, where they've got lots of support, or at someone else's ground. Were there any injuries to key players? Did the referee make any errors? And even what the weather was like could possibly have affected the results. Now there are many other factors that could have had an effect on the result of the match and therefore you cannot say for certain whether the new signing was the reason that the team won. So in science, we need to pick specific variables to investigate and design experiments that only look at those variables. Now, the independent variable is the variable that you want to look at to see if it has an effect on something. you change or choose this variable. The dependent variable is a variable that may or may not change when you change the independent variable. Now the dependent variable is the variable you measure. Now you want to be able to say that any change in the dependent variable, the one you've measured, is caused by the changes you have made to the independent variable. But you can only say this for sure if you control anything else that could have altered your results. Now, these variables, if left uncontrolled, could affect your measurements, and thus, you cannot make a def definite conclusion. Now, these variables are called control variables, and the way they are controlled is that they are kept the same. Now, in a fair test, the only thing that should affect your measurements of the dependent variable is a thing that you have chosen or changed 
which is the independent variable. So let's go through an example. If you wanted to investigate how long it took a bar of chocolate to melt at different temperatures, then the thing you would change, your independent variable, would be the temperature of the Bunsen burner. Remember, you're measuring how long it takes the chocolate to melt at different temperatures. Therefore, you would be changing the temperature. The thing you would measure, your dependent variable, would be the time it took for the chocolate to melt. So you are hoping that changing the temperature of the Bunsen burner will affect how long it takes for the chocolate to melt. You can only say this for sure, however, if any other factor that could affect how long it takes for the chocolate to melt is controlled. Control variables, therefore, include the type of chocolate, whether your chocolate is no chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate, whether it was made by Mars or Cadbury's. These factors could affect how long it takes to melt. Therefore, it needs to be controlled. You need to have the same bar of chocolate at each temperature. The mass of the chocolate needs to be the same, because that could also affect how long it takes to melt. As because the size or surface area of the chocolate. Also the distance from the heat source, in this case the Bunsen burner, to the chocolate. If a Bunsen burner is closer in one of the in investigations, that wouldn't be fair, because that distance might affect your results. Also, the starting temperature of the chocolate. If one of your bars of chocolate has been in the freezer, and it's nice and solid, it'll take more energy to melt. If, however, it's already half melted, it won't take as much energy. So this is affecting your results, and thus must be controlled. Now this is only a few. There'll be a lot of variables that need to be controlled to make this a fair test, so that you can say for certain that the temperature of the Bunsen burner affected how long it took for the chocolate to melt. So that was a reasonably quick introduction to the three main variables used in scientific investigations. Hopefully you should now be able to state what a variable is, you should be able to describe what independent, dependent and control variables are, and you should be able to explain why such variables are required in a scientific investigation. So please fill in your worksheet so I know you've watched this presentation.